Hi everyone, I'm David. I was the lead asset creator on Portal Prelude RTX, and I'm one of the project managers of Half-Life 2 RTX. If you're watching this tutorial, you want to learn how to use RTX Remix yourself, so let's get started. When you installed the RTX Remix tool, if we go into here, you'll have also downloaded a sample app. This is a EXE that can be used to learn the RTX Remix workflow. If you go into your Remix installation, that's here where all the BAT files are located, and then go into Depths, then Remix Runtime, and then Sample, you'll find this EXE here, the Sample EXE. Let's start it up, and you should see this. A green floating R, surrounded by five coloured walls. This currently doesn't have the runtime integrated, so let's get on to that next. You can download the runtime from GitHub for the combined latest release, or you can use experimental and more recent releases of the DXVK and Bridge components of the runtime from separate GitHub pages. However, Remix also comes with a version of the runtime that is the most recent at the time of that version of Remix uh, download. So we can just go one folder up, that's where the sample is, go into runtime, copy this, go into the sample folder again, and paste those contents adjacent to the Remix sample exe. Now we're going to start up the Remix sample exe. You'll see some files get created here as the runtime hooks in. And there we go. We now have a path traced title, effectively. You can see the shadow is being cast by VR at the bottom. That's a good example of the path tracing in action. So if we now press Alt and X, you'll see we get the user graphics setting menu. And if you press the developer settings menu, you'll get a more complicated menu intended for modders of RTX Remix. If you want to save yourself an extra step every time, you can click this tick box in the top right, and then every time that you start up uh, a re this, this particular Remix app that you've made here, and you press Alt X, it will always be the developer menu. So we're going to tick that on. You can then save your settings here. Then you want to click the Enhancements tab. You should start on the Rendering tab. You want to go to the Enhancements tab. Here, you'll be able to make your first capture. It's also here that once you have enhanced assets, you'll be able to get more granular control over what is enabled at what time. If you have any enhanced assets, you'll need to disable them here first before you can take a capture, but we don't have any here right now. So, we're ready to capture. We're going to name our capture here by highlighting this and hitting backspace. You shouldn't change the USD file extension, Although it's worth noting, if you get rid of this, it will automatically capture as a USD anyway. We're going to type sample capture in here as the name of our capture. And then we're going to click capture scene. That was fairly quick. You'll see this progress bar tick up. More complicated scenes will take longer. You do need to wait for this to say 100% before quitting the game, or the capture process will not complete properly. But we have everything now. So... We're going to quit the game. I'm going to go check that our capture got created properly. If you go into the RTX Remix folder that's been created adjacent to the sample app, and then captures, there we go. We now have our sample capture.usd. We have the light that was captured from the scene, any materials captured by the scene, textures, and we also have a thumbnail for our capture. We also have meshes, and if we had any skinned assets, the skeletons would also be captured here. So, now we want to set up our project. Let's go and open RTX Remix. I already have mine open. The screen that you'll see when you start up RTX Remix is this one. Click the Setup Project button, and you'll see four options. Open, Create, Edit, and Remaster. Open is for, a, is for if you are opening an existing Remix project. Edit is when you have another mod that you are trying to integrate into your mod, and you want to therefore start by editing that mod file. And Remaster, as it suggests, is when you basically want to integrate another mod, but 
as a weaker sub layer, which means you're intending to do more work over the original mod's own work. But we want the create project here because we want to author a completely new mod. So click this one here. And then where it says project file location, we want to navigate somewhere on our drive. This is basically where all of your remix side files will be kept. It's also what will eventually be packaged and sent to users as a downloadable remix mod. I've created a folder on the root of one of my drives called sample project. This is where all of my actual modding files are going to be kept, but this is not where the RTX remix project is going to be kept. Instead, we're going to make another new folder in here, and we're going to call this sample project RTX. Now we're going to navigate into here and copy this file parving for our convenience. Go back to remix, click the browse icon here, paste it in here, and now we're in this project file. In the bottom left, we have the file name of the project. This starts as a USDA automatically, and you should leave it as such. This will allow you to modify its contents with a plain text editor like Notepad, instead of only being able to edit it in USD specific programs. We need to give our project a name for the USDA. For now, we're just going to call it sample project RTX. Save as. And now the remix directory. This is the folder that was created by the runtime. So if we go back to where our sample EXE is located right here, and we open this RTX Remix folder and paste this file parving. Go back to RTX Remix, paste the Remix directory here, and then press select. Select this capture here. This is the one that we've made earlier. And then press create. So we now have our project completely set up. If we go back to our sample exe folder, you will see a folder in the RTX Remix folder called mods. This has now created a sim link to this folder right here. And there's also a sim link in this folder right here to the RTX Remix folder. This is how RTX Remix stores all the files and keeps them all adjacent to each other. A sim link is sort of like a shortcut and it uh, keeps all the files adjacent to where they need to be. So. We have our sample project in RTX Remix. We are going to navigate to this box here. And there we have it. There's the game capture right in there. You'll see the floating green R is static. That's since it is moving in real time in the actual game. But here we just have one frame of the game captured. This sun icon up here is a light entity that has been captured from the original game. And then of course we have the box around the R. So we're now ready to do some asset replacement. If you click on the asset replacements tab and then click layers, expand this tab here to get to the mod USDA layer. The mod USDA is another automatically created file that is effectively responsible for being your top level mod file that stores all your other layers and everything. We probably shouldn't be baking changes into this layer because this is kind of quite good to keep as a, as a top level unmodified layer. So instead, we're going to highlight the mod USDA like this so that it's selected in blue and click this plus icon here to create a new layer. We're going to save it in the same place. We're going to name it sample project assets .usda, and then hit create we now have a new sub layer here in order to mark this as our edit target you click this icon here and this is now where all changes will be saved to that particular layer so let's replace this r to start with naturally you should have an asset ready to go um, you can download them from the asset browser, which if you go to the ingestion tab and then add from library, you'll see those here. Or you can download them from another 3D website or of course make your own asset. 
This is one I've made earlier. Here we have a USD file and four PNG files. It's worth noting Remix can also ingest FBX files as an example. Uh, this is one that I've already turned into a USD before. If we go to the ingestion tab then, we have the model ingestion and material ingestion tab. First, let's ingest the model. We're going to drag this USD here into the input file paths, and then we need to specify an output directory. If we go back to our sample project, if we create a new folder in here called assets, and then a new folder in here called, I don't know, let's just call it box. Oscilloscope is a fun one to type. Let's copy this file path here and paste it in here. It's worth noting if you click this tab here or this tab here, you can also navigate there manually. These are just some added features that Remix has to make it a little bit quicker once you get used to the workflow. Now that we have our asset in here, our output directory, we can pick the output extension. If this is an asset you think it would be useful to modify in plain text, you can export it as a USDA. For most cases though, USD is perfectly fine and is more efficient as well. So you should generally uh, export in USD instead of USDA. Let's add this to the queue. There we go. Model ingestion is now done. And in the end result directory, we have a USD file, which it will have been if it started as an FBX. And oscilloscope.usd.meta. This meta file basically tells Remix that this file up here is ready to be used, it has been ingested. Now we need to ingest the textures for the model. Let's make a new folder here called textures. Go in here, copy the file path in advance. Now click on the materials tab. Again, we have basically input file paths. But we have an added box here for convention. This is for the type of normal map encoding that the normal map of your model uses. If you don't know, it's generally safest to select DirectX as it's the most common. However, it's worth being absolutely sure of this as it will affect how it looks in the game quite significantly if you pick the wrong one. So do a little bit of research and just be sure of which one you're picking. I'm going to pick DirectX since that's how I exported this normal map. We can then drag these PNGs into here, same as before, or again, press add to navigate there manually yourself. You'll see that Remix automatically detected the uh, texture type of each of these textures. So the roughness mask is loaded as roughness, the base color as albedo, the emissive as the emissive mask, and the normal map as a normal map. It does this by name, not by actually looking at the texture, so in order to make sure this happens, make sure you name your textures uh, as you usually would for its type. There are all of these other types as well. Uh, besides roughness, we also have metallic. We have the other two types of normal map encoding. And we also have height maps for use for parallax corrected uh, parallax occlusion mapping. In the other tab, you can use this to ingest other textures that don't come under any of these. For example, an anisotropy mask. Um, but generally speaking, this will catch most of your use cases. You can specify then the output directory. We can just go here and control C this again, just to be sure. Paste that in there. Again, you can browse there manually and press add to queue. Texture ingestion generally takes longer than model ingestion, but we'll see this is still fairly quick. There we go. So. Let's control C this file path again for our convenience and then go back to the modding tab. So you want to select the R mesh now and then click add new reference here in the selection box. If you press go here and paste your file path to your USD, you can then double click this and it's coming a little small. So let's make it a bit bigger. There we go. Now, generally speaking, your asset should be uh, a replacement of the original asset that makes sense and also is about the same scale and axis. For this circumstance, we're just using a bit of an extreme example. 
fact, let's make this let's make this just a teeny bit smaller, maybe more like a scale of three. Yeah, that seems a bit more reasonable. So now that we've done that, we can now delete the R. So this is officially now replacing the R altogether. It's not appended, it is replacing it outright. Let's click save the layer just to make sure our progress is saved. And then go back to where your box is, go back to your textures. And now we can begin integrating textures onto the mesh. To do this, You'll scroll down here to the Material Properties tab. And then from here, you can begin adding your material pro your materials. Each of these can either be located via a browse thing here, or you can paste the file path here and the file name. In the cases of actually pasting in files and not merely file pathings, it's generally easier to open the file picker, paste the file path, and then select the file from here. Since this is now a Beto map, we're going to select our base color ingested texture. Select, and then if we just get inside here real quick, we can see, there we go. The base texture is now applied to the model. We're going to do this for all of the other texture maps. Next on the list is the roughness map in the specular dropdown. We go in here, select roughness. That will now load our roughness map. And then if we go into the normal map category, again, paste the file path and select our normal map. We're going to do the emissive last, since it has a little bit more complicated steps included. So you add in the emissive map, the same as you have done for the albedo, roughness, and normal. But now you need to click on enable emission. When I click this on, you should see this screen start to glow. And there it is. We're going to leave it at that level of glow. That seems reasonable to me. And now, we are basically fully replaced, but we can do a little bit more to this scene. You can, of course, add a light to an asset as well. We're not going to do that here, but you can do that uh, if you'd like. There's a, there will be other instructions on how to do that in other documentation. What we are going to do, however, is modify this starting light up here. So we're just going to left click this light. And then you'll see here we have a bunch of options for color temperature, color, exposure, intensity, radius, etc. The only thing we're going to modify here for now is the intensity tab. We're going to make this light much darker. Maybe even more like 10 intensity. This should ensure that as this oscilloscope spins round, most of the light in the scene, or at least a, a uh, noticeable amount of light from the scene, is coming from the oscilloscope's green screen. So we're going to save the layer now. And then we're going to go back to where our sample app is located here. So with all of these changes saved, with the asset implemented, we're now going to start up the Remix Sample app. And there you have it. The R is now replaced with whatever model you used, in this case our oscilloscope, and you can see the emissive green screen is casting a gentle green light on the surrounding walls. We could make this more obvious by either reducing the strength of the overhead light or increasing the strength of the emissive screen but this will do for now. I hope this tutorial was very helpful for you, and good luck with RTX Remix.